All right, welcome back everybody. I am an avid herpetologist and I have got some more awesome spoilers from the Digimon TCG BT11 set. We are still in the midst of spoiler season. I know some of the cards that will be going over today are a bit of a day late, but I've been very busy. I do apologize. I have a full-time job on top of trying to make some videos for fun on the side. Um, so I know I'm a little bit late on some of these, but some of these were spoiled just earlier this morning. So I wanted to talk a little bit about them. Um, real quick before we do into the spoilers, I have a super fun announcement for you guys. So it looks like we have finally been successful and we'll be doing our first Digimon TCG uh, gameplay live stream this coming Thursday. That is, I believe, the September 8th. Um, we are going to be trying to get started somewhere between, I believe, 6 and 7-ish um, Eastern Standard Time uh, here in the U.S., so if you guys are interested and want to see us play some awesome Digimon content, please feel free to stop by. It's going to be me and a couple guys from my locals. We're just going to be meeting up and having some fun, playing some Digimon. Um, if you want to see my Machine Digimon deck in action, stop on in. Or, or any of the other decks that you guys have seen me post on the channel. If you're interested in seeing some gameplay, please feel free to stop by. We're going to have a wide variety of different decks to choose from. I'm not going to be posting... A, uh, a full list of all the different decks that we have available, but if you guys are stopping in and you are interested in seeing particular matchups, if you'd really like to see how one particular deck fares against another, feel free to co come in and comment. We will be more than happy to try to mix things up and show you guys uh, matchups that you guys want to see. I think that would be a lot of fun. So if you guys are interested in doing that, please feel free to stop by and hopefully I will see you guys on Thursday. With that out of the way, we are going to go ahead and start talking about some of our new spoilers and we have some real exciting ones. Um, to begin with, we have got a whole line from Egg all the way up to Mega, including a Tamer and Option, for the Black War Greymon X line, which is super, super cool. Now, I was honestly not expecting them to actually do Black War Greymon X, since technically speaking, Gaiomon is kind of Black War Greymon X already, but they surprised us, and they gave us a full Black War Greymon X. To begin with, we have our Egg here, and... Shed a quick tear for all my fellow Machine Dramon stands. I was really hoping it was going to be something related to cyborgs and machines. But alas, we have another egg for the Greymon line. We've got a lot of eggs for the Greymon line at this point. But, I mean, what are we expecting? Greymon, Garurumon, those are the big names. They're going to get all of the all the special treatment. So we do have another Greymon egg here. But this one is a little bit different from the ones we've seen before. This is going to be our first Greymon Black Egg. For those of you who watched my Black War Greymon deep dive video, uh, we talked a little bit about how Black War Greymon can run a black base, and we're actually seeing support pushing it towards a actual um, black base and black all the way through, which is kind of cool. Some of this new support is actually pretty solid. Um, to begin with, we have our egg, which is Koromon. Uh, it has an inheritable on the opponent's turn once per turn. When an opponent's Digimon is deleted, if this Digimon has Greymon in its name, draw one. I'm also not sure if that's a translation error or not. If it's only on the opponent's turn, that's kind of interesting. Um, there are effects that the new Black War Greymon X has that is going to support that kind of an effect, that inheritable. Um, but it is kind of interesting that you only really get it on the opponent's turn. I'm actually not sure how I feel about that, to be completely honest. Might be a little bit of a bust there, but who knows. Only time will tell. Um, but the egg is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We're going to move on up to Agumon Black X Antibody. Right away, guys, we are getting pretty close to Yu-Gi-Oh! levels of card text on some of these new cards. This is quite the paragraph here. Um, to begin with, it does, of course, have the typical X-antibody effect to digivolve for, from, uh, for zero onto any Agumon. It has the on-play and when digivolving effect to reveal three cards from the top of your deck. You can add any card with Greymon or the option card X-antibody. Oh, never mind. Add one card with Greymon or X-antibody in its name and one Black Tamer. That's interesting. Um, from among them to your hand. I hadn't read that correctly up until this point. Return the remaining to the bottom of your deck in any order. So this is like, I think, Agumon, Greymon Searcher, number like four or five at this point. We have gotten a whole ton of these, and this is still a good one. It's absolutely a good, worthwhile card. Um, it does have the Inheritable, which is going to be the new and shared Inheritable for each of the levels here. All turns, when this Digimon with Greymon or Omnimon in its name would be um, deleted by an effect or returned to the hand or deck. By returning an X antibody option card from this Digimon's Digivolution sources to the bottom of the deck, you can prevent this card from leaving play. Which is kind of neat. Um, I like that it's specifically targeting the X antibody option card. That's a little bit, excuse me, it's a little bit different than what we've seen up until this point, where it's not forcing you to take your time and 
X Digivolve in order to get that inheritable. So basically, as long as you've put an X Antibody card underneath, um, you'll be able to get that protection. Something else neat about this effect that I've noticed is that unlike your other like regular, you know, Greymon X, Garurumon X inheritable protection, you can't restock those. This one you can actually restock. So if you prevent it from leaving play and you make it back to your turn, you can actually put a new X Antibody option card underneath to refresh that protection, which is super, super cool. It's an interesting design space. They're kind of like, I, I mean, you guys may have remembered I mentioned in my, um, my video about the things that I love about the game. They keep finding new ways to kind of innovate on very similar mechanics. I really like that. So they're taking this in another new direction and specifically focusing on the X antibody card. Next up is going to be Greymon Virus X antibody. And this is a personal preference, but I'm going to throw this out there. Not a big fan of these artworks. I really don't care for this design style personally. If y'all like it, obviously, you know, more power to you, but I will say I'm not a big fan of this particular art style. The Agumon X kind of had the same thing going for it. It's just kind of this goofy, puffy kind of artwork. I'm not, I don't know, not a big fan of that, but the cards themselves are phenomenal. Um, so this card, Digivolves, of course, zero from Greymon, and has a your turn effect. When this card would Digivolve into a card with Greymon in its name, reduce the memory cost to pay by one for each color of that card. This is really cool. So this is kind of an, it's a similar effect to Deltamon. It basically lets you play Deltamon without actually playing Deltamon. Um, one of the things that, reasons I think this is important is this actually moves away from uh, needing to play cards that are outside of the Greymon line. So this is basically, all of these new support cards are going to allow Black War Greymon to play multicolor Black War Greymon without actually needing the cards like Deltamon, um, Cyclone Mon, Monochrome Mon. So you can actually get the benefits of having the double colors. So you can play like Maki, for instance, while also playing your copies of Nokia, which is really neat. So this, again, I think it's going to be really cool. It's going to keep progressing that deck forward. Again, another thing that I really like is they keep progressing these archetypes rather than just leaving them in the dust. Um, so pretty cool there. Um, it is worth noting this is three to Digivolve, which is a little expensive. Um, we're really going to be hoping to see Nokia's and Maki's, I think, in order for this card to really be as aggressive as other ones. But then again, it's also an ex-antibody Digimon. So even though it's it's going to be a little rougher if you see this in your hand without another champion, of course, most of the time you're ideally going to be devolving for zero, and which basically for free gives you a draw and lets you then reduce your next Digivolution level up cost, which is kind of cool. Uh, and I'm not going to bother reading the whole thing. It has the exact same inheritable as the Agumon before it. Um, the same protection that's going to be revolving around that X antibody option card, which I still think is super cool. It's also worth noting that this Greymon is officially black and red. We had, did not have a Greymon at champion level that was black and red yet, so this guy fills that niche. Moving on up to our ultimate level. Oh, this is actually an art I actually do care for. This is pretty cool looking. Uh, we now have the Virus Metal Greymon X antibody. So, of course, Digivolves 1 from Metal Greymon. When Digivolving until the end of your opponent's turn, your opponent's effects can't have this Digimon's DP reduced, and it cannot be de-Digivolved. You also have an effect that says, then, if this Digimon has Metal Greymon or X Antibody, you then get to delete one of your opponent's Digimon's 6,000 DP or less. Now, this is awesome. I, I also mentioned in my deep dive video for Black War Greymon, they seem to keep slowly progressing up the deletion window, where we started with the original Metal Greymon, Alteris Mode, um... EX1 Metal Greymon that are going to be deleting 4,000 and less, then we kind of, excuse me, I'm so sorry, the new Alteris mode kind of levels that up again, um, and hits 5,000 or less, and now we have Metal Greymon X that deletes 6,000 or less. So it just keeps kind of ranking up that effect, which again, I think is really cool. I love that they are, again, progressing. We also talked a lot uh, in my Things I Like About Digimon video about Power Creep. This, in my opinion, is the correct way to be doing Power Creep. Uh, and I'll be talking more about the ways that I think Power Creep is being done well in this next couple of cards, because I actually think a lot of our spoilers from today are good examples of good ways to be doing Power Creep. This is a good example where even if you are X Digivolving, it still costs one, so there's going to be opportunity cost. It costs four to Digivolve, so it's very similar to BT8 Metal Greymon, who's probably going to be played alongside this just by nature of what the card is. It's still, in my opinion, the best Metal Greymon to be running in your level five slot by far. Um... This is also two colors, so again, you get the Digivolution reduction from Maki, which is super, super interesting. The other thing I did want to mention is this is the first time we're actually seeing a Digimon that gives itself immunity to de-digivolving. This is also something I think is actually really good to see. Um, as much as I love the de-digivolve mechanic, and it has been a phenomenal form of pseudo-spot removal up until this point, 
I don't think any form of removal should ever be completely free, I guess is the way to put it. Like, no form of removal should ever be completely um, void of protection. Nothing should be... Um, there should always be basically an answer to every type of removal, in my opinion. Nothing should ever be completely um, completely uh, scot-free. I'm, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it. D-Digivolving, they're currently up to this point, has been nothing to stop it. Every, it. It is basically a free mechanic that your opponent has no answer to, no matter what is going on, unless they are hard-playing things. We are finally seeing a Digimon that can actually introduce the ability to prevent D-Digivolution, which, again, I think is really important and is actually really healthy. Um, we're coming up with every new set introducing new forms of removal, whether it be putting Digimon on the bottom of the deck. Um, the new Bagramon tucks a Digimon underneath another Digimon. I don't even know how you would word removal for that. You have things like Chaos Degradation, which get around a lot of these kinds of things by putting it into the security stack. We have all of these different methods of getting things off the board. And D-Dig Evolving, up until this point, has basically been a scot-free way of getting rid of something pesky and making it weaker. This is a very interesting way to get around that. I like, though, this is important, I like that when they have the effect that prevents D-Digivolving, it's only attached to something that doesn't reduce DP, which means it is still able to be destroyed by card effects. Now, granted, there's still the Inheritables to be concerned about, where they can save themselves by removing the X-Antibody Inheritable, right? But they're still... You're requiring different pieces at that point. It's not one card providing blanket um, protection from all of these things. Like, this card doesn't prevent deletion, DP reduction, can't be returned to hand, can't be de-digivolved, and can't be returned to deck. No, like, it's it's still, we're in a, still in a point where we're choosing protection from this and protection from this, but we're making it more unique in what we're getting protection from, and I really like that. Now, the inheritable. Guys, I'm not going to lie, I cried a little bit, and I know it's selfish. As the Machine Dramon player, I, when I read this, I was so hoping that this would qualify for machines as well, but it is sadly, well, not even necessarily sadly, it is specifically used for Greymon and Omnimons. On the opponent's turn, once per turn, when a Digimon becomes unsuspended, if this Digimon has Greymon or Omnimon, trash the top card of your opponent's security stack. Oh my goodness, if this had been given to Machine Dramon, that would have been absolutely incredible. I mean, we're talking about potentially game-ending in certain cases. That is a very, very good effect. Um, it's really good with Reboot, which I think is super, super awesome. That's one of the things that I think this deck has going for it. Reboot is one of my favorite mechanics. It's very, very awesome. Um, and so basically it plays really well with the already existing Wargreymon cards that play with Reboot. But it's not, uh, it doesn't require that. It, again, something else that I really like about the design space here, it's on opponent's turn anytime a Digimon becomes unsuspended. So if they have something suspended, it unsuspends, then they trash the top card. So you can trigger it yourself if they don't have anything in play, but if they do have things in play, you don't need to have a rebooter in play. You can have other things out there, like the regular BT-8 Black War Greymon, um, and when they unsuspend, you'll still get to trash the top card of their security, which is really, really neat. I like that effect a lot. Um, like I said, I don't honestly think it's a bad thing that this is not a Machine Dramon card. I think Machine Dramon is getting plenty of support as it is. As much as I love the deck, it is absolutely my pet deck. Um, I think it is really good that we're starting to see more effects that are pigeonholing some of these guys into their respective archetype. Um, back into the Death Exmon discussion, I think that having those generically good effects is where we start to see things become a little more unhealthy. All of the really good effects from this set are starting to become a little more pigeonholed where they need to be played in their respective archetype if you want to benefit from them, which is very good. Again, this is what I'm talking about with healthy and positive power creep. This is a very powerful card. It's going to do a lot of really cool new things, but it's not so generically good that it's going to warp the meta around itself, nor is it going to get splashed in everything because its effect is generic. So this, I think, is, again, a, a step in the right direction. So I just wanted to make sure I, I mentioned that and compliment that very thoroughly. And there's another card we'll coming up here on here in a minute that I want to double down on that for. But we'll go ahead and move on to the centerpiece of the Black War Greymon X support. And that is, of course, Black War Greymon X himself. Now, this is just, again, a, a personal preference. This artwork is really cool. But I don't care for when they put the Tamer in there, too. Again, this is personal preference. I don't know. For me, it just kind of detracts away from the centerpiece, which is supposed to be the big, awesome mega that you're looking at. I don't necessarily like that the Tamer's there hanging out in the background, but that's just personal preference. But let's talk about this guy, because there's a lot to talk about here. So to begin with, he also did uh, Digivolves 2 from Black War Greymon, very similar to Gaiomon, and similar to Gaiomon as well, has Reboot. Now, he's also playing with his effect on the opponent's turn, again, which I think is super interesting. 
it's it's very different that a lot of these effects are specifically used on your opponent's turn. And this is a good one. Uh, on the opponent's turn, once per turn, when your opponent's Digimon with the highest DP attacks, you may switch the target of the attack to this Digimon. This is also really interesting to me. So one of the big notes that I have about this is most of the time, DP gain that you're going to see on a lot of inheritables are strictly on your own turn. It's very uncommon to get boosts on your opponent turn. So something that instantly is brought to mind is the fact that there are going to be a lot of OTK decks likely still running around, things like Alphamon, um, regular World Grandma X, and things like that, that will have DP boosts active on their own turn. He's not necessarily going to have those. So I'm actually not sure how relevant that effect's going to be. I could absolutely be wrong, and there could be inheritables that I'm not thinking of in this particular moment in time. Um, and of course, we do have those inheritables that can uh, ideally keep him around. But it is very interesting to me that they have this uh, redirect effect. It is a little unfortunate, like I said, that it's only on the opponent's turn it's a redirect, because currently I don't think, anyways, there's a lot of super reliable ways to make sure that he is buffer on the opponent's turn. There's a good chance they're just going to swing over him, even at 13,000. Um, but that is still a really helpful effect where you do force them to play around that. Kind of similar to Magnamon X, um, where they basically have to deal with it a certain way, or they're just kind of stuck. So that's kind of neat. Um, they do also have another... Uh, effect here, however, on the opponent's turn, once per turn, when a Digimon is unsuspended, again, kind of like Reboot, if this Digimon has Black War Greymon or X Antibody in its Digivolution sources, you can delete one of your opponent's Digimon with the lowest play cost. So it's not necessarily going to help um, get over the tall stacks, but if your opponent is playing the one-and-done game, you can Digivolve up into this, and if that's the, their stack is their only thing they have in play, you can Digivolve into him, pass the turn, he reboots, and will instantly kill the opponent's Digimon, which... Again, that's pretty cool. Like, that's a really neat interaction. Um, there's going to be situations where they, I think, can play around that effect pretty easy, unfortunately, where if they have, all they have to do is basically just play a rookie next to their stack, and it's going to protect from that effect. But again, this is a new design space. I like that they're still finding ways to innovate on some of these very simple effects. It's really, really cool. I'm, I'm a big fan of this, and I am super excited to see what this deck does moving forward. Now, this is something I'm really excited about, because we actually have a memory set tamer for the Greymon archetype, and a wild tamer it is. So this is Kuga Yuya, hoping I pronounced that correctly. First of all, it's a four, play, four to play, and it's a memory setter. I don't think we have, other than I guess, um, what's his name, Marcus. Other than Marcus Damon, I don't think we have a memory setter specifically for Greymon, and this is a good one. So when the, your Digimon digivolves into a Digimon with Greymon in its name, by suspending this tamer, that Digimon gets plus 2,000 until your opponent's turn ends. So there you go. This is going to be your way of buffing up your Black War Greymon and making sure that he um, is able to get buffs on your opponent's turn. you got to love how they uh, include the support right there with it. Super, super cool. If it evolves into the same level Digimon, that Digimon is not affected by your opponent's option cards until your opponent's turn ends. A built-in delicate plan. That is super cool. And it's also a good replacement for finally helping us move away from BT1 Greymon, or War Greymon. Now, War Greymon, I think, is still going to be great for specifically um, regular red War Greymon X decks. I think they can absolutely still make good use of him. But this, even in a strictly red deck, is actually still a pretty good replacement, I think. Um, this is also really nice because it lets you Digivolve up out of um, your BT1 War Greymon into War Greymon X, or whatever the case may be and still keep that effect. You don't have to stay on that level in order to be protected from option cards, which is really, really cool. And again, it protects until the end of your opponent's turn. So this is really um, pushing a solid defensive control Black War Greymon deck. I love that Black War Greymon has its own identity from regular War Greymon. War Greymon tends to be very OTK oriented. Black War Greymon seems to always be control oriented. Even from the original secret rare um, solid black black war greymon they've always been more control oriented i like that there is a clear distinguishment between those two different digimon really really cool i love this tamer and like i said i love this archetype i think it's going in a really cool direction without actually straying too far from the direction it was already going in but i think the big talk that everyone is probably waiting to hear about is the option card that was released for the black war greymon archetype and oh my goodness is it a doozy this is hades force they keep making new busted Gaia Force variants, guys, and this one is wild. So to begin with, this one is only seven to play, but if you would use this card and have a Digimon with X antibody and it's a Digivolution card, again, the option card, X antibody, 
reduce the memory cost by two. This is a five to play Gaia Force. That's so crazy. This again, though, I'm going to say this again. This is power creep. But again, I don't necessarily think this is power creep past a certain point. I think this is, again, a healthy way to push the power level of cards thanks to the next part of the effect. The way this is worded is very significant. Choose any number of your opponent's Digimon and Tamers whose total play cost adds up to the play cost of one of your Digimon with Greymon in its name or less and delete them. Then, one of your Digimon with Greymon in its name may attack your opponent. So, basically what that means is you can't just hard play this at any time. In order for this to have maximum value, you need to have Digivolved to at least ultimate level, more likely mega level. So you need to actually set up before you can get full value out of this, and I really think that's healthy. This again, that is a bonkers effect. This is the biggest, most effective tamer removal we have seen up until this point, but it's put on a card that number one is again, pigeonholed. It can only be used while you have a Digimon with Greymon in its name, and it's specifically only usable for the play cost of that Greymon that you have in play. So there is a ceiling. You have to build up if you want to actually get good use out of this. Now, this is a card that rewards you for doing that, which again, that is what I consider healthy power creep. You are rewarding people for playing a deck a specific way, not a generically good effect. Now, Dark Gaia Force was a good example. Again, power creep. Think about the original Gaia Force, which was just red, eight, delete something, right? Then we have Dark Gaia Force, also eight to play. Pick any number of opponents Digimon with 15 play cost or less and delete all of them. The difference is you have to have red and black in order to play it. That's the difference. So when you move from one effect and make it better, you add an extra restriction that kind of keeps it slightly um, more specific. So you have to jump through a few more hoops in order to get the effect. This card is still moving in that direction. It's cheaper. It's more diverse, potentially, potentially game ending, wiping up to three tamers because keep in mind black war Greymon is a 13 cost that can wipe three memory setters minimum like that's crazy that is absolutely wild you can do that for only five memory but the condition is you have to have a black and a red Greymon in play so specifically it needs to be black war Greymon. you can't play this in like Greymon x it has to be black war Greymon, and you have to have a full mega stack in play in order to get the full effect I like this effect, guys. I think this is really cool. This is, again, this is good power creep. It's making the card stronger, but it is still putting more restrictions on in order for you to gain the benefits. I love that. I think it is super cool. And it's still keeping that awesome security effect, deleting opponent's Digimon with the highest play cost. So very similar to a regular Gaia Forces effect. I th Again, I think that's just perfect. I think that's exactly what it needs to be. That way, security checks, you're still getting your Gaia Force effect. While you're from hand, you're able to use this at any point, really, but if you really want to make good use of it, you have to play around it and build for it, which is awesome. So before we move on, there are a pair of green cards that got spoiled. Now, I'm not going to talk, I'm, I'm just not going to talk a lot about these guys. I'm sorry for green stands out there. There are some really cool green cards that have already been spoiled from the set. I probably should have talked more about the Tyrannomon support that got uh, put out there, but I'm just going to be blunt with you guys. This is not worth getting excited for, in my opinion. If you are big Hercules Kabuterimon stand, by all means, get excited. I, I apologize if I'm depriving you of that, but I really don't think these guys are going to make much wave at all if they see any play, period. I think Grandis Kawagamon is just so, so much better than these guys, but we'll still talk about them. They do still exist. Um, this guy is Hercules Kabuterimon X. Digivolves one from Hercules Kabuterimon and has security attack plus one, which is pretty nice. Um, when Digivolving, if this has Hercules Kabuterimon or X Antibody in its Digivolution cards, return one of your opponent's suspended Digimon to the bottom of its owner's deck. So this isn't necessarily the worst. Um, it does actually combo very well with the structure deck, Hercules Kabuterimon, to be fair. Um, that is a really nice interaction where you can kind of spot remove something as long as you go into Hercules Kabuterimon safely. You can then Digivolve into this and... Um, something that you suspended with the Digiburst effect, you can then tuck to the bottom of the deck. So there's there's some good uses here. It's not it's not completely um, bad at all. I just don't think it's good enough. Now again, I could absolutely be proven wrong here. We may end up seeing more X antibody support for the Hercules Kabuterium online that makes excuse me makes this card a little better. Um, but as it stands, I don't think this card is good enough because it basically needs to compete against Grandis Kawagamon. Like, that is what it needs to do in the green space, specifically for, like, these insectoid-style decks. 
Um, Bloom, Lordmon, and Hydramon are still going to be around, but those are a very different green deck. So specifically for an insectoid kind of um, play style, I still don't think this is good enough to beat out Grandis Kawagamon, but who knows? Maybe it winds up being good. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but they did also put out an option card as well. Again, I don't think this option card is really worth talking about a whole heck of a lot. Um, it's for three. Choose one of your Digimon with Insectoid and Straits. Suspend two of your opponent's Digimon with DP less than or equal to the chosen Digimon. Then one of your opponent's suspended Digimon doesn't unsuspend. With a security effect of suspend two of your opponent's Digimon. It's just, I mean, it's a common, guys. It's, it's a bulk common. Uh, I did want to mention it because I think the artwork is actually pretty neat. Um, very cool being able to see Hercules Kabuterimon like this. Um, it's not completely worthless, and if we're specifically talking about like a pre-release format, you can probably do some good with this card, but you specifically need an insect in play, has to have DP less than that Digimon. This is basically similar setup to the Gaia Force that we just looked at, but it's so much worse. It just suspends two things and then keeps one of them suspended. Um, the only, only time I can ever see this really being helpful is if you're playing some kind of a janky combo deck with like Boncho Stingmon or something like that. I just don't think it's super worth it. But like I said, this is a common. Not every card in the set needs to be a winner. I don't think this one is, but again, who knows? Maybe there's some niche uses for it. Now, before we go on to the second line of um, cards that have been spoiled, there's actually another uh, uncommon that I really want to talk about. That is Clavis Angemon. So the uncommons tend to fly under the radar, but guys, I'm a brewer. This has got my brewing sentence going. This guy is really cool. He's got some really neat effects. Um, so he's 12 to play, 12,000 DP, 4 to Digivolve. He's got pretty standard mega stats. When Digivolving, if you have 5 or fewer security, recover 1. That's pretty standard as well for as far as yellow goes these days, but it's the second effect that really has me interested. On the opponent's turn, any time a card is removed from your security stack, one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 4,000 DP. The more I think about this, the more I actually like this. So not only is this awesome removal, so basically if they swim with something, you then get to spot remove something. So let's say that they swing with something small trying to avoid this. Like they don't want to get blown up, so they swing in with something small. If that thing loses the fight, you then get to hit something else for minus 4,000 DP, which is pretty cool. Um, this is also really interestingly good at stopping OTK strategies, where if they swing in with something really big, let's say... Again, using a present example, I don't know how relevant these will be by this point, but let's say that you have an Alpha Mon or you can, right? And it doesn't have any kind of protection that keeps its DP from being reduced. So it swings in, checks something, gets minus 4,000, instantly drops it to 12k. Check something else, now it's down to 8k. At this point, just after two checks, there's very, it's very unlikely, or should say it's becoming less likely that you're going to keep surviving those checks. Eventually, you may actually hit something that just straight up kills you, which is pretty neat. And even if that's not the route you want to go, if they're trying to OTK and they have a bunch of bodies on board to swing with, again, as they're um, breaking your security down, you can also start removing their threats because of that effect. You can do the minus 4,000 to anything you want. That's really neat. I think this is super diverse, actually. Um, I recently posted a Megazoo deck list for Jagamon, uh, which was specifically green-based. I actually think this card is really interesting in Megazoo decks. This is another one of those cards that has a good generic protection effect while it's in play. It's really, really cool. Um, so anyways, I just wanted to talk a little bit about this guy. I think Clavis Angemon as a Dingemon is really neat. Um, and I'm really interested to see if this effect can actually do something. I want to see, see some people brew with this. I think this is a really cool card. Again, new design space. I love to see it. So now we're going to move into the most recent spoilers that we've got. Um, and that is going to be a purple and yellow line. So we're going to start with the two champions. I'm going to try to talk about these um, relatively simultaneously because they're they're very similar to each other. To begin with, we have Devimon. We also have Anjimon. Now, this is artwork I can get behind. This is some really epic-looking artwork. And these are some cards that are going to be playing, I can already tell, very well into the Mastamon archetype. Once again, I think these are really awesome ways to encourage use of previous decks. Um, so, Devimon to begin with, 5 to play, 5,000 DP, 2 to Digivolve from a yellow or purple. Anjimon, spoiler, has the same stat line. But they have different effects, and they play really well off of each other. Devimon has, while you have a yellow Digimon or a yellow Tamer in play, this Digimon has Rush and Retaliation. So when it enters play, it can attack immediately. And if it is deleted in battle by a Digimon, by attack um, in either direction, then you delete whatever deleted it. Anjimon, on the other hand, has an on-deletion effect. If you have a purple Digimon or a purple Tamer in play, you can play a Devimon for free from your trash without paying its memory cost. That's a really neat and very simple contained combo, where if this Anjumon dies, he goes into a Devimon who can then attack for free. So if you swing with Anjumon, you can automatically get a Devimon. 
Not only is that a really interesting and very synergistic play, guys, it's flavorful. I, I'm a sucker for big flavorful plays, but when Anjumon goes down, he basically turns into Devimon. That's super flavorful for the lore of Digimon. I think that is really cool. The whole thing is I believe Devimon is supposed to be a fallen Anjumon, which is very cool. So I'm a big fan of that. Um, these guys are going to be filling in some uh, champion spots that Mastimon didn't necessarily have super great um, spaces for. Uh, Gatomon is, of course, still going to be seeing a lot of play, and obviously he's probably still going to be at five copies. Not five copies, four copies. Goodness me. Um, but I think these two cards will very easily slot in and be replacements for your other level four slots. I think both of these cards are really, really good. Um, Devimon having Rush and being able to get played off of Mastemon from your security, again, nice synergy there. So these cards are, again, really cool. I'm liking, again, the design space these guys are in. Moving on up, we have our Ultimates, and I'm just going to say it again, I don't like the artwork with the Tamer. Again, I'm sorry. If you guys do, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just don't care for it. So we have another copy of Lady Devimon. Now, my first thought when I read this was, or should I say, even when I saw what Digimon it was, this is going to need to be better than the structure deck Lady Devimon to see any play. And that, that card's already pretty good. But this is a pretty good card, too. Um, when Digivolving, you make a trash a card from your hand. If you do, return a Mirai, Mikagora, or one card with generic angel traits um, from your trash to your hand. I do think the original um, Lady Devimon is probably better than this one. We'll see. Um, maybe you can play it a, a couple copies, but I think the original one is actually significantly better than this one is so i don't think it's going to make super big waves not like the partner in crime uh and Juwamon, who we're going to get to in a moment but it does have a your turn once per turn when you play an anjuwaman or the tamer we're going to get to uh you gain a memory so there is a, some nice at least some nice synergies there um where you'll get memory for playing the tamer or hard playing anjuwaman which you can do for free um under different circumstances so that's a that's a kind of neat effect. I don't necessarily know that it's good enough. Again, if, when it's strictly competing with the other Lady Devimon, I don't know that this one's good enough, but we'll see. It does also have the Inheritable, once per turn on the, or on the opponent's turn. If you have a yellow Digimon in play, all of your Digimon with Angel Traits gain Retaliation. Pretty cool. Um, so basically just makes your board a lot more frustrating to deal with because more than likely this is going to be under an Angel as well. So no matter what they do to swing over your board... They're going to have to start trading bodies, which is real frustrating sometimes. Take it from me. So that is really cool. But I think the better of the two definitely has to be the new Anjuamon. Now, this card will absolutely rewrite the way that Mastemon plays. When Digivolving, you may search your security stack for any angel uh, trait card, reveal it, and add it to your hand. If you added a card to your hand, you can then recover. So this is very on par, in my opinion, with the Lady Devimon that I was previously mentioning, where... It's getting value from an area where you don't normally see a lot of value from. You can search, get your angel, and then recovery. It's a effect we see time and time again. We saw it with Yellow Hybrid, Shine Greymon. Searching your um, security stack, taking something, and then replacing it is a always a good effect. Like, it's always super good. So that is already very strong. And it gives you free knowledge of your security attack for when you're ready to go into Mastemon so you know what kind of things you already have in there. And you can then stack your security with a different card if you so choose. Um, but it also has, of course, the same effect as Lady Devimon, where on your turn once per turn, if you play Lady, Lady Devimon or the Tamer, gain that memory. This one, I think, is much more likely to actually be really good for the Mastemon archetype. Maybe I'll have to do a deep dive di video for, for uh, Mastemon or Dynemon at some point down the line, but... Uh, I don't play purple or yellow a whole lot, but I do at least have that deck built and have played a little bit with it. Um, it's a very interesting archetype. Um, this Inheritable is just as good, but potentially even better with the Lady Devimon Inheritable, to be fair. Where if you have a purple Digimon to play, all your Digimon with Angel uh, traits gain Blocker. That means potentially your entire board can be nothing but blockers with Retaliation. That's pretty scary. I'm not going to lie. Um, if there's a way to consistently pull that off and you have a way to go wide, that can potentially be really difficult to get through. So, I don't know. Maybe it will be worth playing some copies of Lady Devimon after all with that in mind. Again, I don't necessarily know. Like I said, you are still competing with the Structure Deck Lady Devimon. We're going to have to wait and see whether or not that winds up being worth it. I'm sure there's going to be splits of a lot of these different cards actually in the final deck list, but... It's more support for the archetype, and it definitely strengthens the archetype. I really like these guys again. Um, but moving right along, we're just going to talk very briefly about the two option cards that got spoiled in purple and yellow. 
because they're not a whole lot to talk about. These are very similar to the green one, uh, and also similar to the Machine Dramon option that I mentioned in my Machine Dramon spoilers video. They're just not great, and again, they're commons. Like, again, not every card in the set needs to be a winner. These are commons, and they very much read like commons. When you would use this card, if you have a Purple Tamer, reduce the play cost by one. Eight to seven, not that big a deal. Uh, and the main effect is delete three of your opponent's unsuspended level five or lower Digimon. They have to be unsuspended. They have to be five or lower. Don't think this card is going to be worth playing. Maybe it's a nice tech choice, but it's a common. It reads like a common. I don't have a whole lot more to say about it. The yellow one is pretty much the uh, very similar deal. Re uh, reduce the cost by one if you have a yellow tamer in play. Uh, until the end of your opponent's next turn, three of your opponent's Digimon get minus 5,000 DP and security attack minus one. This one at least has a potential to be a little more playable just because of that security minus one and the potential to kill things with the effect. But even still, again, this is a common. Um, I think it's going to be a bulk common. It's there. Wanted to mention it briefly. These cards are, are neat at least. Their artwork are pretty cool, but I don't necessarily think these are going to be good enough to see play. Certainly not over Chaos Degradation, Flame Hell Scythe, any of those effects. But the card that we really need to talk about is their Tamer. So the last card to talk about in our spoilers for this video is Mirai Mikagura. I think that's the correct way to pronounce that. So a couple of really interesting um, things that break new ground with Tamers here. To begin with, this is our first super rare Tamer. As far as I know, I, like I've checked everywhere. I'm pretty sure all of our other Tamers up to this point have been rares and below. This is our first super rare Tamer. And on top of that, it's our very first Tamer that costs five memory. We're reaching into higher levels. And I gotta say again, power creep. This is a very powerful tamer, but the trade-off is it costs five to play. With the, the, I, I, if you're making connections here, if you're playing it while you have your Anjumamon or Lady Devimon, then it's still going to cost four, but it still requires you to play around that if you want to play it for four memory. Otherwise, this is our very first ever five-play tamer. It also has a unique start of the turn effect where you just gain a memory for nothing. Um, it's not a memory setter. You don't gain multiple memory. There are no conditions. It's just start of your turn. Here's a free memory. I don't. We have not seen anything like that yet, not where you just have no conditions and you just gain a free memory. Um, now the effect on this card is absolutely nuts. When your Digimon digivolves into Anjuomon or Lady Devimon, if you have one or less Digimon in play, by suspending this Tamer, you may play one Anjuomon or Lady Devimon from your hand with a different name from the Digimon that digivolved without paying its memory cost. So basically, this again is encouraging you to play Anjuamon and Lady Devimon together when you digivolve into one. As long as you don't have anything else in play, you can suspend this and play the other one for free. That's really strong. This is a, this is the Tamer that lets you play an ultimate Digimon for free. Power Creep. But once again, this is Power Creep done properly. This is Power Creep where you are going to be, um, you have to digivolve into specifically Anjuamon or Lady Devimon while you only have that Digimon in play. That's very specific. And yeah, I, again, I think this is just a really good example of ways to innovate on these cards and make cards potentially stronger without breaking the game in half. I think this is going to very, very strongly um, increase the power level for Mass Daemon decks. I think this is phenomenal for that archetype, but it doesn't push them to the point where other decks are left left in the dust. This increases the power level of that deck. In fact, it even, in a certain way, it almost metamorphosizes the deck, where it actually changes the way that it plays in some ways, where you're going to want to be making different lines. Oh my gosh, I, I just, I love this kind of design area, guys. I think this is a really exciting um, spoiler season. The cards that we have seen from BT11 so far have been awesome. We have seen a lot of very exciting cards already. We still got a long way to go. Not even a clue what our secret rares are going to wind up being. Who knows? But anyways, guys, I hope you guys have enjoyed this quick little look into um, these new spoilers for Digimon TCG BT11. Hope you guys have stuck with me this long. If you do, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please feel free to like and subscribe and leave your comments down below about what you guys think about these spoiler cards. I am excited. I hope you guys are excited too. Digimon TCG is still going strong. Um, the new set spoilers are still getting me super hyped up every single time. They're still going in really cool new directions. The game is progressing. It's evolving. And I'm absolutely here for it. Now just get rid of Death Exmon and I'll be a happy camper. I kid, of course. I'll be happy to see that card go, but anyways, guys, that's it for the video. Thank you all once again for joining me. I am an avid herpetologist. I hope you all have a great rest of your night, and I will see you all next time.